Oh my, my, my. Here we are. Welcome everybody once again to the big time show. What's going on, everybody? Hello to everybody that is on Facebook. Hello to everybody that is on Periscope. And again, hello to everyone that is on YouTube at this present moment. Welcome. And those of you that are on Podbean Live, it is a pleasure once again to just hang out. What you feel about it? And wow, what a night. I got a feeling this is going to be uh, because it's a special night. It is a special night for this podcast. Uh, and my last show, I told you guys that my last show was my 50th show. Uh, and uh, I told you that we are going to go to another level. I wasn't expecting the level to go uh, immediately to another level. But, hey, this is how God works. Uh, and so I am excited on today. I ask that you would share, 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 share uh, this post. If you're a Cowboy fan uh, tonight, most definitely you need to share, 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 share. Uh, we have a tonight, a, 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 I guarantee you, you're going to enjoy uh, tonight and our guest on this evening. But before we get started, uh, let me first uh, acknowledge Alec Winters, who you just heard. Uh, of course, that music from, as I always say, I appreciate him letting me use his music. You can find him on the Chord Academy. He's a young brother. Uh, that's from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, he's in the Berkeley School of Music, as a matter of fact. Uh, he's a young jazz artist, but he does everything. Uh, you can find him on the Quarter Academy. You can hear all that great music that you just heard. It is a pleasure to be here. What's up, Buddha? I see you, man. What's going on? What's going on? I see you there. Uh, but tonight is also a special night. Uh, because tonight is the first night I'm proud to announce tonight that uh, for the first time, uh, the Big Time Show podcast is being sponsored. Uh, we are sponsored tonight uh, by the Fragrant Shop Memphis. The Fragrant Shop Memphis. And you'll see on your screen, uh, for those that are on Facebook and Periscope and YouTube, you'll see that on your screen, the Fragrant Shop Memphis Fragrance Shop Memphis at gmail.com. Fragrance Shop Memphis at gmail.com. You can see uh, one of the, the one of the best uh, cologne and perfume shops owned by my fraternity brother, Pod Bean. If you're there, uh, it's called the Fragrance Shop Memphis. You can find that on Facebook. And they have some of the best fra uh, fragrances that you can find Tom Ford, Bond Number no. Nine, Creed. Uh, and all other major uh, exclusive brands as well. Uh, we have fragrances for both men and women. Our price much lower than retail. We have fragrances that you will find at your local department stores, even those that are hard to find. And, of course, some exclusive fragrances. Uh, listen, it's almost Valentine's Day, you guys. Whether you know it or not, you can go ahead and get a jump start on that now. By going ahead and you know, hey, everybody like to smell good. Look, I, I hope everybody like to smell good. I don't, I don't, you know. Well, I'm just gonna look. I can't speak for nobody. I speak for myself. I like to smell good, uh, and so I I would be a shopper at the fragrance shop in Memphis. Uh, you can get ready for Mother's Day and all other special gifts uh, that are there. I hope that you are excited on tonight. I am excited on tonight because i have tonight my brother with me one of my brothers from way back way 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 back and uh it's amazing how how god will uh bring you back together again in some shape or form even though you've been distanced for a long period of time uh there is no doubt that i am getting ready to bring to you not only um you know, if you're from Memphis, Tennessee, uh, you got to forgive me for looking down. I'm trying to share this as much as, as many people as I can. I hope you are, too. I hope you're sharing before I bring him in, because I want to bring uh, give him his full attention. And hopefully uh, he'll be able to help us on tonight. 
uh, with some knowledge because he is loaded with it. When I tell you he is loaded with it, uh, this is not a – you don't find good coaches out of Cracker Jack boxes. <laughs> good coaches have to be developed. Uh, and certainly we have one here tonight uh, who – who has been with a lot of great players. He's coached a lot of great players. And some of those players will attribute their success to him. Uh, but I know him a little bit different. Uh, I had somebody ask me uh, earlier, how did I get our guest for the night? And you have to understand a lot of history. Uh, this guy and I played football together uh, when we were kids. I'm talking about in the old Parkway Village Football League. So y'all don't y'all, you know, you had to be from Memphis from that to understand that. Uh, and then we progressed on uh, to playing high school ball together at the one and only Kirby High School. I hope my Kirby folks are on here tonight. I, I don't know. I'm not looking in the chat yet. Uh, hey, hey, LCIC, I'm looking at Buddha. Okay, I appreciate you, Buddha. I see you shared it. Uh, we played high school together right here in Memphis, Tennessee at Kirby. I graduated high school before he did, uh, but he went on to uh, gain a scholarship and play at BYU. He played at BYU. He was a great high school player. He went on to play college, and then after that, he became a coach. Uh, and he coached that, and I'll let him tell you about it because I don't want to uh, call out any wrong names or anything. I know where he is now, and I know where he was before, but I'll let you in, let him speak for himself. And my and I'll just give me just a couple seconds. i got so many groups I need to share this with. Forgive me, everybody, for looking down because this is highly raggedy, uh, but I'm trying my best to do it real quick. Uh, thank you, Buddha. You probably already. Hey, I can see some Kirby folks on here, Coach. I'm fit to bring you in. We got Kirby in the house. They they miss you. They see it. I see some East Haven, Thrillswood people. Look, look, look. I, yeah, here we go. Five man, where yet? I see you. Hey, Bumblebee. Hey, Miss Ty. I see you. All right. I'm I'm, I'm happy about it. Look, I'm excited tonight uh, to bring in my brother as he comes in now, and there he is. Uh, there he is. Look, there she is, Angelique, uh, Dennis, Coach Simmons, Angelique on there saying, there she is. That, that's my man. Listen, welcome Coach Dennis Simmons, uh, the wide receiver coach for the University of Oklahoma uh, Sooners. Uh, I mean, my goodness, and he's been there. Hey, what's up? What's up, Greg? I see you, man. Everybody's coming in slowly but surely. Uh Listen, he's been there, if I'm not mistaken, Coach. You have been there since 2016, am I right? Yes. 2016. Uh, so if you're a college football fan, and I just told you that Coach Simmons has been with the University of Oklahoma as a wide receivers coach since 2016, if you're a football fan, you ought to be thinking right now of some of the people that he has coached uh, just at the University of Oklahoma. But prior to that, Coach, come on, tell me, where, where were you at coaching? Oh, man, my journey. Um, I started off at uh, BYU as a graduate assistant. And from there, I went to uh, Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. I was there for, I think, two seasons. I did an internship with the Buffalo Bills. Then from there, I moved on to Texas Tech. I was there for nine years. Uh, from there, I went to East Carolina. Wow. From East Carolina, I went to Washington State. And from Washington State, I'm here now in uh, Northern Oklahoma at the University of Oklahoma. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you, you do not find coaches out of Cracker Jack boxes. We talk, <laughs> we're, we're talking about a real deal uh, coach, a coach that uh, – you know, let, let me tell you something strange about him, what I found out. Because if you know Dennis, then, well, I'm sorry, Coach Simmons, I'm going to be respectful. Oh, man. But, man, come on, man. You Look, we teammates and all that. I'm just going to call you like, you know, I'm just, okay. I, this, if you know Coach, hey, 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 Larry, Larry Gregory is there, Coach. I don't know if you've seen these comments. 
But you got a lot of Kirby people who hadn't seen you in a while. There you go. That Larry Gregory. Yes, sir. Pastor Gregory. There he is. What's going on? Uh, look, but Dennis, man, is so humble that, that you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to tell you. Now, Coach, just, just, just go ahead and correct me if I'm wrong. You know, usually when you try to look up, there go Tiffany Smith, man. Look, all this this ain't no but a Kirby reunion coming up. This this all it is. Just a, yeah, they ready. Here we go. Here they they all they, they I told them you was coming and there you are. So they all showing up, man. This this, this gonna be love here. So when you look up a coach like like uh, Coach Simmons, you usually can find a lot of stuff on them, but. Here's the funny thing about Coach Simmons, y'all. Coach Simmons ain't correct me, Coach, but do you have a Wikipedia page? I mean, I Coach, come on now. When you you just ran off an impressive resume, but but we can't. I mean, he's so humble. He don't even have a Wikipedia page, and this man is flat out loaded. You don't even have a Wikipedia page. Why? Why, Coach? So you see what I'm saying? That's that, that's that Memphis dog in him. I told you. Here you go. See what I'm saying? When you talk about the places where you've been, the part that you guys are probably interested in, other than hearing his coaching resume, is some of the, the people, some of the great players that he has coached, and some of these names that he's going to probably run off to you. We're talking about guys who were in – uh, Heisman, the Heisman Trophy finalists. We're talking about all Americans, unanimous all Americans, consensus all Americans. They learned under this guy. Uh, Coach, I looked you up last night in my little study and I found something that was awesome that was written about you in 2018. They called you the secret weapon of Oklahoma football. Now that just blew my mind because we all know who your head coach is, Coach Riley. And when you start talking about the Stoops family and all that kind of stuff, but they called you the secret weapon of the University of Oklahoma. I thought that was just flat out awesome. And there's a reason why. Just give us, just give some of the listeners here some of the, I guess some of the, if you want to say, I know you're going to say all you guys are superstars, but I know that's the coaching thing to say. I get that, but. Uh, just, just, just give us from uh, Texas Tech. I mean, from your back in the day. Give us some of the names, and some of these names are going to be familiar. Give us some of these names that uh that 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 everybody knows by now. Uh, okay, names that everybody knows. Uh, obviously, uh, Michael Crabtree would be one of them. Uh, yeah, he's definitely going to be a first ballot college football Hall of Famer. Yeah. First two-time Blitnikoff Award winner. Yeah. Uh, I help you. You know, uh, Dee Dee. Dee Westbrook. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was uh, actually Dee. Uh, the our journey together and, and working with him was the one that took me to the Heisman. Uh, had a chance to go to the Heisman ceremony. It was kind of uh, a surreal, cool deal to do. You know, especially. You know, having played the sport and, you know, you always watch it on television to actually be sitting in the room. And you were like this one. I was actually sitting right next to one of the more famous uh, Dallas Cowboy players. You know, you know, one of my idols as I was growing up. So I was elbowing my wife like, babe, do you know who we're sitting right next to? And she leaned over and she was like, no. I'm like, that's Tony Dorsett. <laughs> Which, I mean, he was a really nice guy. Yeah, yeah. That was a, a, a really cool, really cool thing to do. And then, uh, you know, obviously uh, being able to go back to back with uh, first round uh, draft picks these last couple of years with, uh, you know, C.D. Lamb and Marquise Brown has been, you know, one of the more exciting things uh, that has happened in my, in, in my career. Wow. Uh, so. For those that do not know, when he said Marquise Brown, most of you guys know him as Hollywood Brown. Hollywood. Hollywood. Did you make him Hollywood, uh, Coach? No. You didn't. You didn't make him Hollywood. Okay. It's funny too. <laughs> uh, like he, 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 he
she is from Hollywood, Florida. Uh huh. So one uh, before uh, the Oklahoma State game, he came and he was like, "Hey, coach, I want to wear my grill. I want to represent." <laughs> I'm like, "What?" <laughs> so he puts his grill in his mouth and he looks at me and smiles. He's like, "Do you care?" And I'm like, "Bro, if that's gonna help you play better, then <laughs> do you?" That's awesome. I, I got big, we we all got bigger issues to worry about than you got to go play the uh, you know, I was like, I probably personally couldn't pull it off and wouldn't do it. But no. Hey, this, you do, do you? <laughs> and that dude went out and he balled out. Like Two hundred and eighty some yards that game, and the actual uh, the guy that was announcing the game started calling him Oliver Brown. Yeah. Uh, in the third quarter, and it just it stuck with him. He was actually jet when he first got here because he he's a pretty fast kid. So yeah, his Twitter handle and all that stuff was jet. Wow. Jet, jet quickly landed and Hollywood took over and just been out. So wow. And, and and for those that do not know, when the coach uh, just brought out the Belitnikoff Award, the Belitnikoff Award is is given to the best wide receiver in college football, and Coach Simmons is one of uh, only two coaches walking God's green earth that has coached two Belitnikoff winners. And that's that's so out of all the coaches in football. This man that you're looking at on your screen is one of only two that has coached two Belitnikov winners. Uh, he has he's responsible. He just called out uh, Marquise Brown and CD. He called off um, uh, Michael Crabtree, uh, and these guys were all Americans. And this is the guy that coached them. So I believe, family, those that are listening on Podbean and everything else. I believe it's safe to say that this man knows what he is doing. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think I think we are safe in saying that Coach, Coach Dennis Simmons uh, knows football, knows how to get the best out of a wide receiver. Uh, he knows what he's doing. Uh, but not only that, Coach Simmons is loved by the whole team. When you say Oklahoma, of course, we start talking about Baker Mayfield, we're talking about Kyler Murray, uh, two Heisman Trophy winners. We're talking about Jalen Hurts, uh, guys who he, I'm um, quite sure, have had some influence on as well. Uh, so we're talking about a guy that I'm looking at now that is, you know, serious business. And uh, so we're blessed tonight to have such a coach here. And we're not going to keep him long. We want to get him back to his family and all that. We're just happy that he decided to hang with us. But, Coach, I got to tell you, that my show is basically, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. My show is basically dedicated to you know my team. I'm I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan, uh, and and we all know who number eighty eight is with the Dallas Cowboy, and and so I think it was uh, well. First, before we talk about CD, talk about OU this year that's coming up. We may have some Oklahoma fans on here. Are y'all ready? Is it is it back to back to the BCS but national championship game? We you know, you all get close every year, so what what's going on? We're gonna we're gonna make it and we're gonna win one year. So you know, sooner nation is not happy. So yeah. I'm pretty good about the guys that we have returning. Uh, you know, our our offense is pretty good. Uh, we have some other dedicated to their, their craft. So we feel really good about, you know, the upcoming season. Uh, to be able to do what we did uh, in a year like this past year uh, was difficult, but it was it was something that our kids handled, with, handled like champs. Uh, you know, we had a couple of hiccups in the road, but, you know, with all of the distractions and everything, but to see these young men handle things the way that they did, I mean, it gives you, you know, I guess I'm getting a part of that older generation where you look back and you're like, I wonder what the younger generation is going to do. I mean, it gives you, it gives you a reassuring feeling that you know, this this world is in a better place. No question about it. And I'm quite sure since it seems like every year you producing at least one All American. I mean, that's that's what your track record showing. So, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you sending number, you know, first round draft picks. 
it seemed like every year from the wide receiving court, you got another one. I know you got some uh, – hey, Kendra Cooper. Look at Dennis. Look, Kendra Cooper. <laughs> I, I told you, it's a cur- it's a Kirby reunion, man. Uh, do you get? I, I know you have some some kid that's about ready to make their next step to the league, probably after this year. I'm quite sure you yeah. do. Um, you know, to be honest with you, man, I just and I try to encourage them just keep their head down and focus and grind. And then at the end of the year, you know, we'll let the see where the chips fall. Yeah, some guys here that you know have the potential to, to be, you know, really elite. Uh, but, I mean, you know, both them and myself still have a lot of hard work to do to get them to the point. Oh, yeah. But I, I, I do believe that, you know, they're dedicated in doing it. And they're dedicated. If they're going to walk, I'm going to run for them. So I do believe that you know, we'll have some more guys that will come through here and work. They'll get a chance to experience the draft day experience and get a chance to, you know, fulfill their dreams and play, you know, put on some cities. Uh, Jersey and I hear you, and I really believe that uh, it's also safe to say that uh, it seems like to me that Oklahoma is a pipeline as far as a wide receiver goes, straight to the NFL. I mean, you, I mean, you you guys are producing, uh, you know, I mean, legitimate Pro Bowl type receivers, uh, difference makers. So again, uh, I like to compliment you on on what you do. Uh, without getting into no type of scheme and all that kind of stuff, because you know I can talk about, but I can just say you you're doing a uh, obviously a great job, and that's where you're at. And before we move to CD, let me say this: now, all Cowboy fans, I'm grateful for Coach McCarthy. Okay, I am. I I, I was grateful because uh, he brought experience. But y'all do remember that talk when everybody was talking about uh, uh, Coach Riley. Coming to Dallas. Y'all remember that, right? You remember they were saying the Oklahoma coach was coming to Dallas. And 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 I wish that would have happened uh, because I'm being selfish. I would have been in every Dallas Cowboy game because Coach Simmons would have been a coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And I would have had some tickets every home game. I would have been in Dallas, Texas. So, I, I, I appreciate Jerry Jones, but then I can't stand Jerry Jones. So that's all I can say. I, he should have went out there. Like my boy was going to finally make it to the league uh, with him because Coach Riley, uh, if you you just have to check the record, Coach Riley uh, takes Coach Simmons everywhere he goes. Uh, so, I mean, it's just no question. So I'm, I'm still upset about that. Uh, I, I ain't wishing nothing on uh, Coach McCarthy, but, uh, you know, uh, I just hope you come. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, man. We we look. We we look. I was I was gonna find you too, man. Look, don't leave your boy out. Don't leave your boy out. We got to come to Dallas, man. Look, if you would have been on the coaching staff. Oh, that would have been a dream come true for me. I would have been there. But I appreciate you so much. We're not going to hold you much longer. Let's talk about CD real quick. Uh, and and give me your – I mean, I know we had different quarterbacks this year. I was when Dak went down. But just give me kind of an assessment of what you thought – how you thought CD's first year as a rookie went. You know, for a, a guy to not really go through mini camp and – not really have a whole bunch of preseason games, you know, he came out and, you know, don't get me wrong. CD is one of those guys that was mentally prepared to, to play in that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, obviously having those type of, you know, pre-games and, and, and practices and stuff like that, it, it helps anybody that's coming into the, into the league. But for him to come out and do what he did his rookie season, not being able to do that, you know, and, and my hats off to all of the other rookies that you know were successful this year. I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah, how was it difficult for you guys? I mean, I mean I, let me go back. How how difficult was it with this 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 COVID little world we live in? How difficult was it for you guys this year at Oklahoma? It was a transition. I mean, you know, as a, as a coach or anybody dealing in sports, you know, you used to hands on involvement with your players, and you know, a lot of times 
you know, athletes and, and coaches all in, uh, like her kind of regiment, used to a routine and, and things like that. So it, it, it forced you to change your, 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 your thought process. It forced you to change your, your meeting habits, your practice habits, your travel habits. Uh, you know, there was times where you can have no more than, you know, six guys in a room at a time. So wow. I mean, okay, how do you do your position meetings that way? So, yeah. And then, you know, you, you convert to, you know, Zooms and, 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 and other technology sites where you could, could, could meet on. But once again, you kind of lose that that personal touch. Yeah, the football brings, yeah. And then, you know, going out practicing, you know, our kids did basically their off season and all of our fall camp practicing with masks on. Wow. So, I mean, you remember what fall camp was like. Rough. <laughs> Hot and rough, Doc. Hot. I mean, yeah. You know, to be able to be out there and do that with, you know, something covering your mouth and your nose, which is kind of a, a you know, two important elements uh, when it's, yeah. it comes to breathing and, and, and keeping your body cool and, yeah. and, and things of that nature. You know, so there were some adjustments, but, you know, once again, I mean, these guys made them. Yeah. And, you know, they, they did it and they didn't complain. Yeah. Uh, then you, you, you throw in the social uh, social injustice things that were going on in the country at the time. And I think one of the things that people lose sight of, uh, you know, when you're, you're watching football and we get, you know, what we do as a form of entertainment. But at the end of the day, these guys are, are, are people too. And, you know, a lot of what was going on in the country was affecting, you know, people coming from, you know, neighborhoods and walks of life like they were. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it's like, okay, well, yeah, we got to win games and that's important for our livelihood. But, you know, at the end of the day, our players are the most important things to us as, as, as men and as coaches. So, you know, when that, that whole ordeal was going down, it's like, wait a minute, let's put a pause on, on the football and let's, 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 let's coach life for, for a minute and, and get these guys understanding what's going on around them because right now they're struggling. Yeah. Yeah. And let's make sure we're all on the same pages with what's going on around us. So therefore we can't help them. And, okay. You know, I think that within itself probably aided this group and aided our team more than any, any practice or anything that we could have done. Man, that's, that's real there. So it, it, it I believe that's kind of the universal thing even at just about in every sport, I think there's it turned to life more than sport. Uh, when we look at the NBA and we look at, uh, of course, uh, college football and WNBA and, uh, you know, even baseball and soccer, everybody participated. I think um, for that little moment in time, I think that um, obviously uh, at least the sports world kind of locked arms together uh, for that moment. And, and the sport actually became secondary is one of the few times that it, that it you know, that it had uh, happened like that. I'm just glad, man, that you was able to stay healthy. Uh, you look like you all right. Uh, that, that I know it was difficult. I, I, I can just imagine how, you know, when you just, you, you messed me up when you said that y'all only had maybe about six people in there. And I'm saying like, man, how can y'all watch film, you know, properly? Yeah, I'm saying properly. I mean, you know, we used to sit there, you know, watch film together and get chewed out and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, six people in a room, that's that's kind of tough, man. You know. Uh, yeah, and you guys still got to be socially distanced. So, I mean, yeah. You got a huge room with six people in it. And it's like, you know, guys over here, guys over here. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, let me get back to CD. I ain't going to hold you too much longer, man. I sure appreciate you, you hanging with your boy. Uh, let me let me get into a little scheme wise, I guess. Let me get to a little bit. Cause you know C D better than probably most. Uh, well, I'm quite sure you know him almost better than some of the cowboy coaches do. Uh, <laughs> I believe I mean that's obvious. He, how long C D stay with you? Three years or two? Three years. Three years, yeah. So I you with C D his sophomore year of high school. Oh man. Three years. Oh man. So I mean so you 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 do know him better than cowboys. Uh, here goes here goes Reggie Glassby, man. There Reggie is Kirby in the house, man. There you go. Hey, Amen. <laughs> right there. Yeah, man. It's, 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 all, it's, it's a family reunion. So, 
let me let me let me ask you this about CD uh, because just from the naked eye of watching, uh, and I'm not trying to put you in the spot. I'm just gonna go with just what I see with CD, and, and of course you correct me if I'm wrong. I believe he can do it all. That's that's just me. That's the first thing. I, I know that. And I think what you're saying with do it all is are you saying play both outside, slide? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that, man, I, 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 we, we know that. But let me just ask you this. I, I, I think I know what you're going to say, but is he more dangerous from the slot or from the outside? I mean, he's dangerous anyway, but is he more dangerous on slot because – what I noticed when he played this year, there was a lot of third cornerbacks on him. Uh, being, you know, considering everybody was in a nickel or a dime, the number one corner usually didn't jump on him because they had to deal with Amari Cooper on the outside. Usually the coverage kind of rolled his way. But but when you put him in the slot, it just seemed to me that he's, at least as of this year, and I don't know if that's because he was just more comfortable there or he knew that was his role, but you being this coach for a long period of time, is he more dangerous in the slot than outside? Well, I mean, you got to look at what the Cowboys have personnel wise. Uh, you know, I think they want to maximize their three to four best wide receivers on the field at a time. So, I mean, you know, do I think he could go out on the outside and, and, and create havoc for a defense? Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I've gotten you know, two and a half or three good years to look at that and, and, and be able to uh, prove that with film. Uh, but, you know, he's one of those kids that, and I shouldn't call him a kid because he's a young man, but he's one of those young men that understands, okay, the culture of that team, mm-hmm. the culture and what they have of the offense. Mm-hmm. You know, let me, let me, let me pencil myself in to enhance it. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, to answer that question, it's kind of not answering your question. I think he understands where, you know, his role. Fits, yeah, what best fits the team right now? Mm-hmm. What best fits the organization? And he's going to do everything he can because, you know, CD is about winning. Mm-hmm. And you know, if it if it meant him, him play tackle, mm-hmm. you know, he he'll line up in there and try to go play tackle. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think he could be successful in both areas. Uh, mm-hmm. I would imagine, you know, after – and I don't get a chance to watch a whole bunch of NFL games because of – Y'all working. Yeah, we're – you know, our heavy – we're finishing out the last game and, and preparing for our upcoming opponents. So, you know, I get to see bits and you know, pieces. My passion, my wife and my son uh, record all of what he and Marquise does. And, and yeah. I watch it with my, with my kid when I get home. He's the – you know, he's the biggest CD Lamb fan in the world. Yeah. Awesome, so, man. So, you know, I do think that uh, when the time presents itself, he's going to be able to showcase that, you know, I can't go outside and, and, and be, you know, the NFL likes to turn, you know, terminology, your number one or your number two guy. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, one of the knocks on him or one of the question marks uh, that have always been on him, at least coming into the league, was his, his weight. Have you encouraged him to? gain a little bit more or do you don't think it's necessary? You know, I never I never do that with my players here. Uh and honestly he and I never really had that conversation. Uh you know, C D came in, he was one seventy some uh he played his freshman year probably around one seventy six to one seventy eight. Played his sophomore year, uh, you know, closer to 180, 190. Mm-hmm. Uh, he played his uh, junior year around 190, 195. Okay. Uh, I'm always, you know. He I'm just always, don't look it, but he's that big, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he yeah. is. You know, he's a, you know, he's a well put together kid. Mm-hmm. You know, I've always been one of those guys that is, you know, not necessarily focused on how much you weigh, mm-hmm. you know, but you know how strong you are. Yeah. How how, how strong you play. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you watch him play, you know, there's not very many DBs getting off his blocks. No. Not very many people bringing them down, you know, mm-hmm. the first guy trying to tackle. Mm-hmm. So to me, it was like, get stronger, get stronger, mm-hmm. uh, more so than gain weight. What about, uh, that, that, that kind of go back, because when I started thinking about some of your guys that you've had in, uh, in college, they all kind of, you know, they're not the typical, 
you know, a possession type receiver. They're real shifty. They're real, you know, get out of the get out of you know, get out the breaks real easy. And I mean, just leave people in the dust. Is that the kind of receiver that you want at Oklahoma, or is that was Coach Riley is looking for? Is that I mean, is that I mean, we like when you're recruiting. I know you're trying to fit everything to go to Coach Riley's system, but is there a prototype that you like per se? fit the pieces to the puzzle in the system, he's going to adjust the system to what the pieces are Okay. on the table. Uh, okay. And to be honest with you, like my philosophy and receivers it really stems back from Cecil Dow. And hey, man. I mean, I, I, want, I want athletes. I want basketball. Yeah, there you I go. That kid, throw somebody up, make a miss in the phone. Yeah. So when I'm evaluating, you know, I can't really care less about how tall you are, how much you weigh, you know, can your film shows that you can play. You can play. You, you can be a, a difference maker. Then I, you know, that's what I go off of. Mm-hmm. Really, you know, I don't look at the stars to see what their rank and who else is offering them. I'm just looking to see, okay, can this guy play? And then once the film shows that he can play, then I want to get to know that kid. Mm-hmm. I want to get to know, hey, am I going to be somebody that can help him, can motivate him? Is you know. I'm go- he's going to be someone that, you know, I want to be around and I want to bring into the culture of the room. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I want my kid around. Yeah. You know, am I going to, you know, am I going to be a fit for him? Yeah. Because you know, it's like, you know, not, not everybody works well together. That's true. But, you know, my, my recruiting philosophy and, and the process is, you know, getting to know, getting to know the guys that I work with. Gotcha. And, you know, are they good people? Gotcha. Gotcha. It's not, I'm not going to be out hanging out with, you know, yeah. girls, but I'm like, okay, if I was 20, would I want to hang out with this guy and would I want him to be on my team? Gotcha. Gotcha. And, you know, there's been some guys that have been very talented that fit that bill that we recruited. And there's been some guys that have been very talented that, that didn't fit that, that bill that, you know, hey, I don't think he's a good good person. Yeah. We deal with wow. Wow. That's awesome, man. So, in other words, character counts, and uh, the standard cannot be broken. That or whatever it is that you said, that's why you want the best wide receiver coaches in the game. No doubt about it. No, I, I know you. I look your track record. Like I told you, for those that are catching on, this man ain't even got a Wikipedia page. I mean, I mean that, that don't even make no sense. When you have a resume like this man has, you know the least you could do is put it out there so people can see. Which leads to this question, and I'll come back to CD. I, we talked yesterday for those, I mean, we talked. Uh, when you're this good as you are, and you are good, I brag on you myself. When you're this good, why aren't you in the NFL? I think that's a, you know, that's a choice you got to make. Here in the league, you know, my kid ain't coming out to practice if he do well in school and, and watch him at the practice. Mm. It's not coming up to the facility and, and running around and, 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 and things of that nature. You know, I'm at a place right now where, you know, I invest a lot of time away from the home with work. Yes. But I'm at a, a, a place right now where, you know, my wife can travel to every world game that she wants to go to. And, you know, my kid is – a fixture in our office, you know, pre COVID. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's getting a chance to know the players. The players are getting a chance to know him. I mean, yeah. it's, it's truly, you know, it's work, but it's been, you know, a, a working environment where everybody's a, a, a included and is a part of it. To me, that's important. Uh, in the NFL, you don't really have that. It's, it's more of a business oriented uh, at- atmosphere where, you know, that's just not, just not a part of the uh, of the day to day operation. So I mean, I have a, a six year old son and an eleven year old daughter. I mean, right now it's more important to me that you be there. They, yeah, that you know. That, yeah. Yeah, they know dad works, but yet they can still be around and and, and be a part of. Yeah, they know dad coming home. That's 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 matter. Yeah. Bottom line, they know dad is soon later gonna open up that door. That's 
That's flat out awesome. Uh, I ain't gonna hold you on one last thing. Let me get you two more, and then I'll let you go. Number one, um, I think CD had a great year uh, myself, um, considering the fact that he had Andy Dalton and Ben DiNucci <laughs> as the quarterback, and he still put up almost a thousand yards uh, in a limited time, no training camp, uh, n- not a lot of practice. Uh, still learning the system from killing more, uh, and still put up that those type of numbers. So, you know, anything can happen, but projecting wise, I'm quite sure you probably feel the same way I do that, you know, with that coming back, hopefully, uh, I'm quite sure that we talking about what, what everybody kind of predicted for the Cowboys, uh, before that got hurt, everybody was saying that the Cowboys probably would have three 1000 yard receivers. Uh, and considering the fact that I think that, uh, well, Cooper did get over a thousand CD was right there and, and Gallup, I think had about 800 and some odd. I think it's safe to say that, uh, we, I know you expecting big things from, from CD next year. No question about that. I know you. Yeah. And then and talking to him as often as I do, he's probably more irritated, you know, not just with the, uh, you know, the passes that he didn't catch. Yeah. Cause there was, you know. Okay, this one's a little behind me, but you you know yeah. I can still make this make this play. Or, yeah. You know, there was one particular that I can remember him talking to me about when uh was in the end zone. It was a jump ball and he pulled the ball into his chest, but he pulled it into the defender's hand. He was like, I should have as I, I grabbed it, I should have pulled it back. That way I could have secured the catch. So I mean he's more focused on, okay, how do I correct the ones that I didn't get? Yeah. And, you know, learning more of the system. Uh and understanding, okay, I know where I fit in this piece of the puzzle, but how does it complement the guy to the left of me, the guy to the right of me, and what are they doing on the backside? You know? So do I anticipate him, you know, superseding his his, uh, his yards, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, one of the things, you know, and having him here and going through all seasons with him, that's something that I know he's thinking about, and that's where I know he's in the film room uh, looking at, and I know him, he's in the film Okay, well, they had this corner on me last week, last year. Mm-hmm. And he studied that guy during the week. Now he's probably starting this this process of going through and evaluating and studying all of the other guys on there in case they, you know, they do put him on the outside or they move him somewhere else and he got somebody, a different guy to face him. Are you, is, am, I, am I okay to ask you this? You don't have to answer this, but are you still coaching him? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm still coaching him, but I mean, he and I talk quite often. And, yeah. You know, we got that type of relationship where he knows if he calls, if hey, do you think this was this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him my opinion. Now, mm-hmm. We've been around each other and we understand each other enough that you know sometimes he might not agree with my opinion or like my opinion, but he knows that yeah. I'm asking. I'm putting yeah. myself out there to get it, and it's the same thing with him. I mean, yeah. you know, we played a couple games this year, and I called him like, hey, bro, you know. What's, what am I doing wrong with these with these guys? Why won't you know? Why can't I get him to do this? So I mean, we have that that type of relationship. But I mean, I do that, you know, with with, with not just CD, but I, I do that with Marquise. I do it with Crab. I, I, I do it with DD. I mean, yeah. Like I said, we you know in the recruiting process, you develop the relationships. You know, those relationships are things that you know, I want to have for life. Yeah. You know, I was at at, at Crab's wedding. You know, yeah. So, I mean, you know, and I anticipate, you know, being at, you know, all the, the other guys when they decide to get get married and, yeah. you know, and have kids and all that thing. I mean, it's it's a, it's a connection, that's a bond that they'll, they'll last, you know, the friendships that will last forever. Man, awesome. Well, Coach, I told you, man, I wasn't going to be hard on you tonight. The next time you come, <laughs> the next time you come, we're going to go ahead and break some, get some real scheme talk, you know, real football stuff so you can, Help the viewers out. Like tonight, go ahead and hit me with one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Can you, look, I'm trying to be nice. I don't want to ask you one, and then all of a sudden you get you get a little shaking and then say, well, "I ain't coming back to this show no more." So I don't want. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, uh, I, I I I saw this and and this is not a hard one. Correct me again if I'm wrong. But it seemed to me that CD's strength 
is really on showcase from the line of scrimmage to maybe about the first seven yards off the ball. I'm not saying he's not dominant on the outside and he can't go get it. It's just that that I mean, CD me CD to me is sudden. You know what I'm saying? He's he's sudden, and I and I don't think nobody can get a a real good hard jam on him. You you just break me down here. I I think that when he line up in that slot and and shake somebody and get open for a little four five yard slant, because it seemed to me that he's just the most dangerous is with his yak. Uh, with his yard yard after the catch, I, rather than going, you know, down the seam because he's gonna outrun everybody going down the seam. I see that, but it just seems like he's just so dangerous from zero to to seven yards. Am I right about that, or or I mean, I know he can do it all, but am I right about that? Hey, uh, striving to perfection. I see you. Hey, Tommy, uh, coach, uh, you got a you got a Texas Longhorn fan on here, so just hold tight. You know, I. I yeah, hey, I, I, I know. So we got OU in Texas here. So. <laughs> I hear you. Well, help me out on that, Kelsey. Is he most dangerous to – I mean, you done seen it all in practice. Is he most dangerous from the line of scrimmage to maybe about those first five to six, seven yards? Is he most dangerous like that? He got a release game that is – Off the chart. I mean, for real. That's a point guard for you right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you try to frame him up, all he's going to do is cross you over, and he's reading your leverage. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So he's reading, he's reading whether that guy's balance stands, whether his weight's on his toes, on his heels. Mm -hmm. and then he's just attacking him, and he's got – you're right, he does have elite suddenness where he can get in and out of out of, out of of cuts. And he, he, he's he got so much balance and body control in his hip. And, and mobility where he could he's got power where he could explode off of off of each each foot whether it's right or the left so it does make it hard if you're going to stand in, in, in front of him and try to cover him it does make it hard for him so i mean he's going to set you up and he's going to cross you up you know man I, I, that's that, I, that's what i saw out of him and, and they just make me just like okay let's put him in these positions let me ask you this to you is he more dangerous going down the seam, or is he more dangerous catching a bubble screen? <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on what the coverage is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I kind of I like, I like his uh, – I was never afraid to throw him uh, a bubble screen pass out there because I knew the first guy wasn't happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you get him out in space, he, I knew that he was going to uh, – He's going to take care of you. He, he, yeah, he was good. He was going. You know, our odds were pretty good. Yeah, yeah. That's that's just awesome. I, that that's what I, I see him as. It's almost kind of like same thing when they line him out there on punt return. The first man never, I mean, never brought him down. And I think that's what make him so dang. He's so good, you know, running after the catch. That I think that's one of his, his better traits. He can run just by every route in the route tree. I already know that. I know you taught him that. Am I right about that? I know I'm right. Yeah, he can write every route. Man. Coach, I believe what you think that, that I knew, like the Cowboys had full confidence and trust in him. When they put him back there to be their punt returner. Yeah. The rookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the beginning of the season. Yeah, yeah. You knew that, that for me, because that's. That's risking a lot of injury. Yeah. 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 And that's risking a lot of opportunities. Cause you, how many games do you see change that guy don't catch the ball? Exactly. You're, you're asking a rookie to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and at the beginning of the season, yeah, it don't happen very often. Yeah, man, you're absolutely right. I'm I'm listening to you, coach, and uh, I think I, if I was to put a bow on this in the conclusion, I, I would say that really, and I believe because you've known him so long, it's almost like you saying. Hey, he was a rookie. He tried to, you know, fit in, being a nice, humble guy, being a team player. But it was almost like doing that. That's really not his personality. It's like this dude can take over and and really lead a team. So it's almost like you're saying he – you ain't said it. I'm saying it. It's almost like you're saying, hey, uh, 
he 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 can take over and really be a leader on this team. He just had to kind of like feel his way around, see where everything get, and you probably think he's gonna go ahead and take that jump next year. Yeah, yeah, that's what. You know, I think he learned a lot from this year. Uh -huh. um, and like I said, he'll go back and he'll, you know, he'll his his craft is is something he takes. So he'll go back and he'll he'll evaluate all of those things and and improve from it. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, Coach, I love you, brother. We go way back, man. I ain't gonna hold you. I told you how long I gonna keep you. You probably want to sit and talk with me for a long, but I I'm through with you. I told you I'm gonna be obedient. I'm going to let you go and uh, enjoy your family. Hey, and I really, 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 really want to thank you, man. I thank you. You didn't have to do this, uh, and but you did. I know you have plenty of other things to do, and I appreciate you taking the time out for little old me, and uh, I appreciate you so, so much. Uh, you made my show, uh, you, you bringing me credibility. So uh, this is big, and I hope, that you would consider coming back again. I'm not going to bother you during the season and all that kind of stuff. I'll wait till maybe sometime, uh, maybe before season start or, or wait till after the season. And, uh, we'll talk again and, uh, and, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll get that chance real soon, but I appreciate you. I'm going to call you anyway. Cause we, everybody, everybody from Kirby look like they was happy to see you. I'm going to be, te <laughs> I'm going to be texting you and everything else anyway. So I appreciate you, man. Oh man, but we love you too, Kirby. Of course, is uh, uh standing strong for you, and uh, we just glad to see one of our own uh make it. And without a doubt, Coach Dennis Simmons, uh, you know, there's nothing new. He already has made it, uh, and he just continuing this this tremendous resume uh that he has built for himself. And I guess in part, and Coach, let me just go on and tell you something, man. Stop, stop hiding. Go on, get your Wikipedia page so everybody can see what a great coach you are, man. I mean, yo, you got a you got a resume, man. I mean, good lord, man. Look, y'all got them people. Y'all got them people in Oklahoma that can do that stuff, man. Tell them for to go to work. You know what I'm telling. Tell them to go to work. They, they look. You got a track record, man. You got you have produced some great, uh, solid NFL receivers. Uh, you, you, I mean, Brown was just, Marquise was just in the playoffs, uh, last week, uh, Crabtree speaks for himself. Uh, my goodness, we expecting big things out of CD, a long career. I pray to God that he has a long, healthy career. Uh, but he's, uh, doing his James Malone, man. Look at that. Say congratulations to coach. He's going to curve from everywhere, man. So, uh, we're just grateful, man, that you, uh, one of our own have made a lot of us have grew you know, grew up with, with Coach Simmons, man, since we were kids. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's just a blessing to see uh, uh, how he's become a great man, has a great family, uh, has a great career, uh, and it's just wonderful to know you, man. I appreciate you so much for hanging with me, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. And, you know, whenever you need me, just hit me up. I will, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Coach. All right, right y'all. How about it? How about it? How about it? Coach, all you got to do is get out of there. That's all you got to do is get out of there. I can't get you out of there. There you go. All right, y'all. Hey, the big time show. Hey, hey, hey. I'm sorry. I saw a lot of y'all comments, but when Coach got to start talking, I let him, you know, go ahead and talk and uh, everything else, and we just kind of, Tag team off. I, I saw some of the comments. Tommy, I saw your comment. I put it up there where he was he was talking. He said, What about that pass he dropped that could have put a, us in a position to win? <laughs> what's up, Demonte? Uh what, what's up? What's up, Demonte? What's up, uh 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 Kevin? What's going on? Bro Phipps, I see you. Hey Pi Bean, I'm cr crossing over. Hey, hello to oh my goodness. Chantel, I don't know if some of these people are here. Certified cowboy. Uh, I can't see this. E.T. whatever. The good, bad, and the ugly truth. My partner is here. What's going on? Uh, how y'all like it? You know, how y'all like the interview? How, how, how we do? Uh, 
our coach do, man. I, I, I appreciate him. He didn't have to do this. I mean, he's in the – when I first uh, called him tonight uh, before we came on, uh, he was taking calls right then and there because uh, recruiting. Uh, he was recruiting. Uh, I mean, recruits were calling, and you know, he was calling recruits one or the other. So we all know that college football doesn't end after the bowl season. Uh, he's trying to find the next C.D. Lamb and the next Marquise Brown, all of these guys. Uh, you know, and he, like I said, Oklahoma, man, once you start looking at the team, uh, whatever position, they are becoming a pipeline straight to the NFL. And Coach Simmons is a part of all the young men's lives. I mean, I mean, I don't have to say nothing about the quarterbacks. I mean, Baker Mayfield, uh, Heisman Trophy winner, number one pick in the draft, Kyler Murray, Heisman Trophy winner, number one pick in the draft, Jalen Hurts. Uh, that got there and, and was, you know, arguably could have won the Heisman uh, that year. Uh, Mark Andrews, some of y'all guys know that, the tight end for the Baltimore Ravens. That's where he come from, the Oklahoma Sooners. And when we start talking about the wide receivers, as you heard, uh, we ain't got to the linemen and all that kind of stuff. So uh, Oklahoma sends a lot of guys to the league, man. And Coach Simmons is a gigantic piece uh of the reason why um that that is going on so i appreciate that hey i got friends y'all i got some friends and i think hank williams jr song a song said he got friends in low places well i got some friends in high places come on help me here <laughs> i'm happy about that and so i hope you guys enjoyed that uh um i didn't want to go too far uh, cause you know, we start talking, you know, we've talked, but I didn't want to bring that cause I don't want to, you know, when you have somebody like that on, uh, you know, on, on your show, realizing that this, this, this video could be shown anywhere. Uh, and if you say the wrong thing, uh, you know, you can get in trouble and I was not going to put him in a position to where he had to, you know, be in, you know, get in any kind of trouble or something that would be questionable uh, that, that, you know, may cause some controversy. So I was very careful on some of my questions. I kind of let him talk and kind of fed off him. Uh, and I think we turned out pretty good. You got to look, especially if you consider this guy one of your friends and all that kind of stuff, you know, sometimes you got to protect him. So I was asking stuff in general. Uh, now, when I get on the phone with him, however, you know, we're going to go ahead and chop it up for real uh, and start saying some other stuff. Uh, but I couldn't uh, do him like that on camera because uh, I don't want to get him in any kind of trouble. You know, when you get a guy that's making, you know, let's just be honest, he's making a good living uh, being at Oklahoma. Uh, he's getting paid a nice salary uh, there uh, at Oklahoma. You don't want to ruin nothing for, for him, man. You know, you don't you don't want to uh, do anything for you know to to damage uh, uh you know and you don't want I mean you don't even want to do that so forgive me if I didn't ask the real hard hard questions but you know you have to be responsible uh for uh for your for your guests so I tried to do that I appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed that uh listen that 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 interview was brought to you from our sponsor. Uh, for my new sponsor, who uh, this is our first show with a, a sponsor, the Fragrance Shop Memphis, the Fragrance Shop Memphis, uh, where they specialize in authentic designer fragrances such as Tom Ford, Bond Number no. Nine, Creed, and all other exclusive brands. Whatever you need, uh, the Fragrance Shop has it. The Fragrance Shop Memphis has it for you. Uh, as well as many other brands. They have fragrance for both men and women and are priced much lower than retail. Uh, so the big uh, prices that they may have there in the store, uh, you, it's a good chance that you're going to get a better price uh, with the fragrance shop. Uh, we also have fragrances that you will find at your local department stores, even those that are hard to find and exclusive fragrances. It's a good time for you to Think about getting some good cologne and good perfume uh, for your loved ones or your friends. This is a good time to do it, considering that Valentine's Day is coming up. 
Uh, Mother's Day is right around the corner, whether you know it or not, or it just may be a good birthday gift or, or anything like that, or just because gift. Uh, I promise you, the Fragrance Shop Memphis will help you in those needs. Go to that page. It's your Facebook page, the Fragrance Shop Memphis. That's all you got to do is go there. Uh, Fragrance Shop Memphis at gmail.com is the uh, email. If you go to that page, they will be able to handle everything for you from that point. Remember, remember that. Go to that. If you are out of town, that is no problem. Those of you that are looking on, uh, listen on Pie Bean. If you're listening on uh, here on uh, YouTube or Facebook or Periscope, it makes no difference where you are. You don't have to be local. Uh, the fragrance shop can help you. Uh, with your needs as far as cologne and, and perfume goes. They can help you right now. All you need to do is go to the Fragrance Shop Memphis, uh, uh, the Facebook page. What a great interview for me. I like that. Hey, what's going on? What is the address? Kept, uh, thank you. Thank you. Striving for perfection. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, bro, Phipps, uh, go to the, when you get off from here, just go to the, uh, uh, fragrance shop page the fragrance shop memphis page the fragrance shop uh memphis uh, page facebook page and that you can get in touch with those people there forgive me for not knowing the address i can't i don't want to call it off wrong uh at all so just go to that and i promise you you'll be able to uh be helped he's my frat brother uh so i know he's gonna take care of you uh he's my frat brother so if i'm sending you to him please understand it's good as gold. Uh, if, if you're out of town, like I said, all you have to do is go to the Fragrance Shop Memphis on your Facebook, search for it, and they will be able to take care of you from there. Listen, this has been a great, great night. I'm not through, but I promise y'all, I got about another 15, 20 minutes. This is what I want to tell y'all, okay? I, I, I got the coach out the way. Let, let me tell y'all what I want to talk about real quick, about the Cowboys. Well, not about the Cowboys. Well, let me change that back. I'll talk about the Cowboys. Exactly. Striving for perfection. Yes. Uh, man, you just said something there. Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about Coach Simmons uh, striving to perfection. Yeah. Y you know, <laughs> I, I don't want to turn it into a racial thing. But when you get a guy like that that's in that type of position, where he is valued, now let me let me say something. I'm, I'm telling y'all something. When, when a person is valued like he is, uh, I'll let you in on one of our, our conversations from last night. Uh, if Lincoln Riley would have taken the Cowboy job, uh, Coach Simmons would have been uh, on the staff of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, when Lincoln Riley first got hired at Oklahoma, the very first hire that he did, the very first hire that he did, was Coach Simmons. That's how much value. Before he got a defensive coordinator, before he got uh, another whatever, whatever position coach, the very first coach that he hired immediately was Dennis Simmons, Coach Simmons. So this man has value. And when you got that type of value, and and like you said, uh, striving to perfection, when you, you got to take care of your own. Uh, you understand what I'm saying. You got to take care of everybody, but you don't want to be the cause, at least I don't want to be the cause uh, of 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 him having Coach Riley or the the AD uh, the AD at the school saying, "Hey, uh, we let me play this for you," and there's me there, and he and I asked a question, and he gave a controversial answer, and then you know he got to get scolded, and you know a lot of people lost jobs for saying the wrong things. Uh, I mean, come on now. So I, I, you know, you gotta be, you gotta protect your own, you gotta protect people that you care about. Uh, so that's what I was trying to do there. When I call him on the phone, oh, please understand. When I call him on the phone, oh, we gonna we gonna chop it up for real. I'm gonna say to him on on the phone what I really wanted to say here, but I couldn't. Oh, it's coming, and he know it's coming. That's why. He, that's why he said, "Man, come on, ask me a hard one." That's why he said that because he know I'm being nice. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all know it's the big time show. I don't hide nothing, but I'm doing it now, which leads to what I want to talk about. Here's what I want to talk about. 
Did y'all see that meme that meme uh that put out that showed Tom Brady say he'd been to one NFC championship game, then they put the Cowboys under there and say they ain't been in 25 years, and then they said something else and and say the Cowboys hadn't done this. And Dak Prescott saw that and he tagged Ezekiel Elliott and told Ezekiel, man, hold my crutches. In other words, he got upset about it. I, I, I was like, okay, you, you mad, okay. Do something. I mean, whoo, Lord have mercy. <laughs> you, you, look, it took that to get you mad. I mean, come on, I mean, come on. I've been suffering. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm still on this tip. I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. Look, if you ain't, look, if you're not mad, if that, if that's what it took to get you all riled up that, I love you, brother. I, I look, 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 man, come on, man. Come on. I, I'm just, Show me. Hold your, no, don't, don't hold. Keep your crutches till you get right. When you get right, then we gonna go. Then we talking about keep your crutches. We need you. Can, 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 look, we need you, Dak. We. I don't care nothing about them, what they saying. It's the truth. Brady done went to the NFC Championship game, and the Cowboys had been in the last 25, 26 years. It's the truth. Deal with it. Get ticked off, but get ticked off at the right time. It ain't time yet, Dak. Okay. I don't care nothing about them yet. Yeah, yeah, man. That, that, that's right, Kim. Man, I would just would. I mean, like, uh, Brady did. Brady, Brady ain't been with Tampa Bay for one year. Already, look, Tampa Bay ain't won nothing but one time. And all the other years is it, it, is 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 horrible. One man show up, and look where they at now. They got a good chance. I ain't picking them to win Sunday, but they got a good chance. Uh, Tom Brady is one that you just, you know, you just can't just bet against. I, I mean, how many years do we, you know, hey, man, almost 50 years old, 40, whatever he is, 43. The defense was, uh, uh, Tommy, you're absolutely right. The defense that they played on Saturday or Sunday, whatever they played, you know, flat out dominant. Uh, Tampa, Tampa is a, a well run team, but it does make a difference, uh, Tommy. It does make a difference when you got a general on the field. Uh, if you are listening, uh, Tommy say Brady is a fake goat. <laughs> we, I don't, Tommy, I don't know, Tommy. Tommy, it, let me put it this way. If he the fake goat, uh, it ain't too many names you can call out now that I'm just saying now, you know, uh, he, he, you know, when we start talking about greatest quarterbacks of all time, you just can't judge it by rings. I, I give it that. Uh, but it ain't, it's not too many that was better, uh, Tommy. I mean, I, I mean, the resume speaks for itself. Uh, you know, Joe, Joe. A, a, a definite argument could be made, uh, Tommy. I'm, I'm not even going to come against you uh, with that. No, I, be, I believe that Montana was better than Starback. I hate to say that. See, see, when we started talking about that, Tommy, to get on that greatest stuff, you know, you got to be the best in the area that you played. And there's going to be a lot of people that say, Brash, I was, you know, I hate to say that a lot of people say that Bradshaw, even though we know he had a great team and defense and all that, uh, you know. But but Montana for the era that he played in when it was way rougher, you know, it's just a different quarterback driven league now. And Brady got a lot of he played in some of that, but he got a lot of you know the, the easier rules rather than Montana did. I give you that. Uh, and so an argument could be made. That's why, that's why I kind of what, uh, that's kind of what, uh, Kobe was saying. Kobe Bryant said, well, Michael, no, excuse me, Michael Jordan said, you know, it's totally unfair to say who's the greatest because you can't put, you can't put these guys against each other. Uh, Mike said, you know, I couldn't put them, uh, uh, you know, talk about Will Chamberlain. 
He said, because I didn't play against him. And Wilt was dominant in his era and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of hard, but the eye test tells you something else. Tommy said, put him in Jacksonville and see what happens. Uh, we talking about Brady or all the Jets. Well, I'm going to put it like this, Tommy. I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to put it like this. Tampa Bay had a top five defense in the league last year. But they had Jameis Winston as the quarterback. And they only won, did they win seven or eight games? Um, I think they won seven or eight games. Where the defense probably is a little lower ranked. Not saying they're not as potent. Um, <laughs> Adam Sandler from the Lawn was a better quarterback than Burt Reynolds, yeah. Uh, but Brady is responsible for a lot of wins. It, it, it look, we can't deny where, wherever he go, you know, uh, he, he, he he's a winner. I mean, all we saw was in the Patriots, and everybody would say something about Belichick, but uh, he 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 he's just a winner, man. I, you can't deny it. Uh, Thomas said his favorite is Roger. Uh, Roger ranks high up there with me too. Uh, Gronk, Gronk is not Gronk though, Tommy. You know what I'm saying? Gronk ain't Gronk ain't that that Gronk no more. He's not. Uh, he he. He he just he's just a shell of himself. Well, actually, to be honest with you, they really got two great running backs, Tommy. Uh Jones and Fournette is is still good. Leonard Fournette is still good, but Jones is a home run hitter. So I mean that all that could be attributed to it. I, I mean, I get what you're saying. He got a lot of weapons. You know, when you start talking about uh Brown, Antonio Brown, and Mike Evans and and Godwin, he's loaded. I mean, no question. Uh he's loaded. But it would be the, the the test would be if Jameis Winston was there, would they be in the position that they were in? I don't think so, because Jameis would have made some mistakes, a lot of mistakes. Uh, no question about that. I don't think you know. I don't think he would have thrown thirty interceptions like he did last year. But I don't think that Tampa would be in the position that they're in now with Jameis as quarterback. And I'm not knocking Jameis. I'm just saying he's not Brady. Uh, and Brady is much better uh, than Jameis Winston. So Brady makes a difference, man. Uh, uh, Coach Arian said today that the thing that changed is that he completely got out of the way. He said he let uh, Brady coach uh, the team, and, hey, look what doesn't happen since then. Uh, they kind of running Brady's offense now. Uh, he said he just get out of the way. Uh, now, Tommy, now you now, – I've said what you just said for years, and I'm sticking with that. Uh, I see you uh, strive to perfection. Brady going to win the Super Bowl. I don't know. It's just Aaron Rodgers is just, you know, Rodgers is just different. Uh, but I'm not betting against Brady. Tommy, you said something right there. Now you're talking. Because you had to, once you get away with the rings, now you're talking when you say Peyton. Because when we're talking about the, to play the position of quarterback, and the smarts that it take and, and really being a coach. Peyton Manning was an offense coordinator by himself. Changing plays, every play, and always seemed to be in the right position. Dangerous, just a dangerous player. All them MVPs, a great argument could be made that Peyton Manning was – and your eye test kind of say that. Your eye test says that, you know, Peyton may have been better than, uh, than, than uh, Tom Brady on that. But I was excited about I, I I was laughing at that. But that act like he ticked off and all that kind of stuff. Look, I hope you come back tick off. I, I hope he does. I hope he does. I hope he come back with a vengeance. Cause I'm tired of not playing in the playoffs. I'm tired. Do y'all know that the Cowboys? Look here. Let me let me just in case y'all don't know this. I close. I guess I close. I want to talk about something else, but I save it for Saturday. Uh look. Do y'all notice that beginning of last year in the offseason when they had the NFL meetings that the competition committee uh, fought hard for the extra playoff spot that everybody has? That extra playoff spot that everybody had, um, the competition committee fought hard for that, leading – the competition committee 
was Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones. That last playoff spot usually reward an eight to nine win team. That's what we saw this year. And so what a lot of people came out of those meetings with was that this was the Jerry Jones rule. Uh, the, the new playoff spot was essentially being called the Dallas Cowboys spot. So really what they were saying is a eight-win team or a nine-win team has a pretty good possibility of making the playoffs. Now, traditionally with Jason Garrett there, we were winning at least eight games every year. I mean, y'all know eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight, eight and eight. And the year that we got a real chance to win eight games, we only won six. My God. I mean, they made the playoff spot for us, and we still can't get in. Ooh. I, 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 I can't. I, I, I. I'm frustrated, y'all. I, I, I see you, time. I say you say, come on, let's talk. That that's that's what I'm I'm I'm. Y'all forgive me. I promise you, in a couple of weeks, I I'll be over this stage of, of frustration, and I'll get to some more informative stuff and all that. Right now, y'all just let me just just vent. I I'm I'm, I'm so I'm tired, y'all. I'm just. They made a playoff spot for it. They that's the reason why Jerry Stephen fought so hard. So they figured the Cowboys at least gonna win eight games. <laughs> we gonna we gonna we gonna win at least eight games. Uh, 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 and, and, and you know, and I and I know we was injured. I I get it. I get it. But God, come on now. They made a playoff spot for us, and we still couldn't get in. I, I, I'm, I'm tired, y'all. I, I'm just y'all. Let me vent, man. I, I'm I'm tired. I really am. I want to go to Super. I want to go to the playoff. I want to go to Super Bowl so bad. I mean, I had look last time the Cowboys went to Super. I had hair. I had a hairline. Now my hairline go all the way to the middle of my head. My hairline was all the way to the front. Uh, I look my beard. I was bald faced then, but when I grew a beard, it was all black. Now look at me. Now I look like a reverse Uncle Jesse off the Dukes of Hazzard. Just, just look at me. Just, just, this y'all look at me. I mean, come on now. I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm old. I mean, look, just look at me. I was in my twenties when the Cowboys won the Super Bowl. Now I'm where I'm in my forties now. I'm, I'm in my forties. I mean, come on now. I, I look. I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. You know, I, I, I was a young guy. I was in the club. I was in the club when the Cowboys won. Now I sit in a recliner at home. Now I mean, come on. I mean, just I, this, this, this is this. That's the last time we won. You know, I, I I'd had I had four, five, six, seven, eight different surgeries since then. I'm dang near in a wheelchair almost, I, and the cow was still ain't won. I, I I just I just I just I just y'all stop laughing at me over here. I know y'all laughing. Some of y'all laughing at me. I know. I I I I, I, I I'm, I'm serious. I'm I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired, man. I mean, when I was young, I was playing basketball outside. Now I'm 47 years old. I play basketball on NBA 2K21. I mean, I, I can't pick up the ball, man. I can't. I can't. Kevin said, keep hope alive. Last thing, hang tough, brother. I appreciate y'all. Y'all understand my pain, man. Now, Kevin Phillips don't understand it because he's not a Cowboy fan. Kevin Phillips is a Miami Dolphin fan, which leads to this last thing, and I'll be through. Uh, I'll be through. Before I go read, before I get to my last thing, again, I want to uh, thank uh, our sponsor, our sponsor for the show now, the Fragrance Shop of Memphis, the Fragrance Shop Memphis, uh, Fragrance Shop Memphis, the gmail.com is the email uh, the fragrance shop, of course, specializes in all type of different fragrances. Uh, all whatever you call it, whatever you need is there. Tom Ford, Bond, Creed is all there as well as many other brands. It's there. If they don't have it, they'll get it for you. All you got to do is just say what it is. The fragrance shop, Memphis, will be able to get it for you. 
Uh, you can also have these fragrances uh, that you see at the local department store. Whatever that price is there, if you go to Macy's or whatever, I promise you that the price would be better with the Fragrance Shop in Memphis. So go to the Fragrance Shop Memphis Facebook page. The Fragrance Shop, there it is on the screen for you. If you're out of town, the Fragrance Shop Memphis. The Fragrance Shop Memphis. Find that on your Facebook page, and they will be able to take care of you from there. Last thing I want to talk about. Here it is. I told y'all this couple, well, maybe about a week and a half ago, and I and I asked about was it some smoke to this Deshaun Watson thing? I think I said that maybe about two weeks ago. Well, look where we are now. There's a whole lot of smoke uh, to this, uh, and. If you're listening to all these reports, it seems as if that Deshaun Watson is just about out of Houston, which leads to this last point. Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans hold the NFL draft in their hand. I know everybody was talking about this person going here and this person going here and this person is going here. I don't think so. I, I really don't think so. I believe that the Deshaun Watson and um and the Houston Texans hold the draft in their hand. Why am I saying that? Because the teams that are rumored are teams that are in the top 10. I heard about the Jets, they, they're drafting their number two. I heard about the Miami Dolphins. They're, they got two first-round draft picks, three and 18. I even heard about the New Orleans Saints today because everybody's considering that Drew Brees is going to retire. I heard about the Saints today Go talking about Deshaun. I heard about uh, the Indianapolis Colts with Deshaun. I heard about that. Uh, I heard about Deshaun with the Chicago Bears. I heard about that. And 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 Kevin just with that with that statement he just made there. Because the Dolphins have the third pick and they have the 18th pick. And considering that whoever gets Deshaun is going to have to give up a ransom, Houston is going to want a boatload of stuff. And I believe Miami, the Dolphins have just what the Houston Texans need. They got two first round. If it, it look, if it was me, I have to charge Miami. Miami have to give me those two first round picks. I don't want no, I don't want the third pick. And then I want your first round pick for next year or your first round pick for 2023. No, 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 no. I'm about to give you, I'm about to give you Deshaun Watson. And oh, let me go back since I see striving to perfection. If I remember right, striving to perfection, I believe that uh, you're a 49er fan. And if that is the case, I also heard, of course, about the 49ers wanting Deshaun Watson also. So <clears throat> when we talk about Miami, you have to get I, I, Houston would have to I have to demand that I'm giving you a quarterback who's in his early 20s. Who you're going to get at least another probably, you know, bar an injury, you probably gonna get another nine, 10 year you know, eight to 10 year franchise, legitimate franchise quarterback. And these kind of quarterbacks don't grow on trees. So you're getting a superstar quarterback. You're going to, you're going to give me, you're going to, you're going to give me those two picks. Miami can offer that. Miami can offer that. I see what you said, Kevin. They may not want to, even though that's a good that's a good that's a good trade. The two first round picks and tour, 
and, and Tua can go to Houston and you'll get a, a first round talent. Uh, you may not have to start all the way from the ground up with a quarterback with two of them. Uh, because you got to give them some some team, uh, put some 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 protection around them. Uh, strive, oh, strive to you a Cowboy fan. I look, I even heard some some crazy stuff about the Cowboys. I even, you know, down I don't believe that for one minute. Uh, I mean, just no way. But that Miami. The 49ers is intriguing too, though. The 49ers is very intriguing. Because once they get all their players back, I mean, we're talking about a Super Bowl contender with the 49ers, with all that defense they had. You get them back and you just trade and get Deshaun and put him on their team. The 49ers are favored to win the Super Bowl immediately. If you if the 49ers get Deshaun Watson. I mean, that's a, I'm talking about immediate. Favorite. Uh <laughs> Kim said we would throw Donald Trump with the deal just because. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> wow. I, I, but I I I mean Deshaun Watson really does have once y'all look at it, if this Deshaun Watson and the Texans really have the draft. In the hand now, cowboy related. Here's what I'm I'm closing with. If he goes, you know, like if he go to the Jets or the 49ers or whatever the case may be, um, uh, then a lot of these players that were projected to go in certain places are going to fall, and the Cowboys are picking at ten. And I got a feeling that when when the tenth pick of the draft come up, the Cowboys are gonna have a real hard decision to make because you're gonna have you're gonna have there's, there's a good possibility you're gonna have Chase there from LSU. It's a possibility. It's a possibility that Devontae Smith would be there. The, the the Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, Kyle Pitts, the tight end from Florida, who I love. You're going to have a defensive player. You may have Sertain there from Alabama. You may have uh, Parsons there. I mean, there's going to gonna be a real decision made there at 10 if, if, if the show. Because teams that need stuff, you're not going to need it. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of like, you know, the Jets. You know, whoever, if Houston go to the Jets, uh, you know, they might scroll up and take fields from Ohio State. You know, they might need a quarterback. They may not want to, uh, Kevin. They may not want to. Uh, yeah, I agree, Kevin, 100%. The Dolphins won 10 games this year. You put Deshaun on that team, I mean, they they become incredible down with the defense the Dolphins had. Chicago would be much better, without a doubt. The 49ers, I think, would be a immediate favorite to win the Super Bowl uh, if Deshaun go to the 49ers. With the team that they have and all, everybody coming back, they would be an immediate favorite. Uh, so I, I really do believe, and I'll leave it, we'll talk about this more on Saturday. Uh, um, I see I see the good I see Miss Ty say immediately. She's a 49er fan on Podbean. Uh, uh good for, hey everybody on Podbean. Thank you for hanging with me. Uh thank you so much. I see my wife is on here, Miss Lori. I think she's still on here. Uh she's on here. Uh good, bad, and ugly truth. I think you're still here. If you are, I appreciate you uh for hanging with me. Um Deshaun really holds it, y'all. So I I think we really need, and I believe they're gonna do all this before the draft or right at the draft, because that's where that's where Deshaun's real value comes in with all these picks that they're gonna get. So I believe before the draft or right at the draft, Deshaun Watson is gonna be traded, and from there we'll be able to kind of judge how the NFL draft will really go. Then I really believe that. So. 
that's what I want to close. Y'all think about that. We might dive into that a little bit more on Saturday. Uh, join me on Saturday at 3 o'clock. Saturday at 3 o'clock. Listen, I haven't said it all day long, but I'll say it now. Listen, uh, this is where you can find me if you're looking on the screen. Uh, you can follow the Big Time Show uh, at Google Podcasts, Podbean, where I am right now. Uh, you can follow the, the show at Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Tumblr. Uh, these are all the places where the Big Time Show uh, is being heard and seen. And then finally tonight, listen, if you want to become a contributor of the show, uh, if you want to become a patron of the show, if you're on Podbean, you should see that red bag there or something or something that says become a patron. Just click on that and follow those instructions. We're not asking for much at all. All you got to do is just uh, follow that and you become a patron of the show. Uh, if you're on uh, Periscope, YouTube, or Facebook, uh, you see that. That is my cash app uh, for the show. Uh, I promise to try to keep bringing nice look content. I have some more guests that are lined up. Uh, so be, hey, we on the map, y'all. We are on the map. It's because of you guys that tune in to the show to make the show better. Some of your comments, your questions, all that kind of stuff. This one makes the show better. Uh, and so I appreciate all you guys. If you want to follow the show or become a, a patron, there it is, dollar sign, the big time show. And listen, let me add this. If you want to uh, become a sponsor of the Big Time Show podcast, as the fragrance shop is now, uh, all you have to do is inbox me. Uh, inbox me. Now, most of you know me by now, Douglas Brooks Jr. Uh, you can see that. There's my name there. It's Douglas L. Brooks Jr. Uh, that's my Facebook page. Inbox me there, or you can inbox the Big Time Show uh, Facebook page. Uh, if you want to uh, advertise your business on the show, we we are available for that now as of today, tonight. Uh, we have our first sponsor that uh, sponsors the show. I do not mind having others. Uh, so if you want to do that, hey, tell somebody uh, that we're open here. Uh, the podcast is being heard all over the world, whether you know it or not, uh, uh, Facebook and YouTube and Periscope uh, on Podbean. Uh, the show is being heard in different countries, uh, just as recently it was being heard in Germany, uh, in Ireland, and the UK. Uh, frequently it's been listened to in Australia. Uh, so I don't know how, and I don't know who listening to me over there, but they are. Uh, I've had people from uh, uh, Italy, of course, all across the United States. Uh, the show is being heard. So uh, I appreciate this you guys that are hanging with me, uh, feel free to um, keep hanging with me. Until then, I will see you guys at 3 o'clock. I'm out of here, y'all. I love you. I appreciate you. 3 o'clock, the big time show. We coming. We here now, y'all. I can't turn back now. I can't. It started off as a hobby. The hobby is the hobby is is hobby. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. We'll see you. Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Peace out, man. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. We will see you Saturday, three o'clock. Y'all know what it is. The Big Time Show. Woo! We'll holler at y'all.